Broadcasting online from Birkenhead's YMCA, you're listening to The Grown-Up Choice. This is Vintage Radio. Good morning, Vintage Radio listeners. It's a Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, so it's time for our regular Community Hour show, where we chat with an interesting person who lives and works on the Wirral. And today I'm delighted to say that my interesting guest is one of our Vintage Radio colleagues, John Jenkins. Hello, John. Good morning, Roger. Thank you for having me here on your programme. John Jenkins, as listeners may or may not know, gives us a garden party programme every Friday evening, which is always a pleasure to hear. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I've been doing it for a few years now. Yeah, um, yeah it's been been wonderful playing your records, you know. Just That's like what you vintage radio is for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I ask? Are you a native of the Wirral? I am now. I actually live in Mel's, mm-hmm. um, but I'm born and bred in Liverpool. Um, I used to. Um, I was born in Scotland Road or that area. I lived there for, for eighteen months. Then we moved to West Derby. And then um, I met my partner, and she moved in with me. And and then she, her mum and dad, lived in Mel's, and they unfortunately had to go into nursing care. Mm. So th- their house became vacant, and we moved into that. Yeah. Going back to the start, though, when you you grew up in Liverpool, yeah, you went to school in Scotland, right? No, no, I went to school in Tubrook, uh, yeah. a, a school called Saint Cecilia's, the patron saint of music. That's useful. Yeah, and um, and senior school was Cardinal Godfrey. Um, I loved the juniors, but I hated the senior school. Although I loved the building, the building was an old coach house, like the Victoria. <laughs> yeah. it, it was really strange school. You, you used to have lessons in the attic and places like, and they had fireplaces in, in the in the um, in the school rooms. You know that we were in. It was yeah. an amazing place. Unfortunately, it's no longer there now. But Saint Cecilia's is. So, if you didn't like the school, did you leave as soon as you could? Then I didn't have much. Say really, yeah, you had to go, didn't you? You know, into school each day. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, but did you stay on to the sixth form? I, mean, I, because I was born in June, which is the end of a school year. I, this is what I tell myself, but um, I had to stay on another year to get my O levels. <laughs> yeah. So I was in the, um, I was on the fifth year, and then I stayed on for one more year just to get my O levels because I didn't do it on the fifth year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got them. I got five eventually in, yeah. when I was in the sixth year. And then I um, did you get a job as soon as you left school? Well, I, no, not straight away. I left in the summer, the summer of seventy six, which was um, I've written a song called actually. Um, <laughs> but there was um, I ended up. I had a friend who was actually a chef, and um, for one reason or another, I got talked into becoming a, um, going on a catering course. Yeah. In those days, I think they were called tops. I think I don't know what it means. But I ended up in the Nautical Catering College for three months, learning how to um, how to cook and be a waiter and to do accounts and stuff like that. And I'm, I must have been the worst person there. I was, it was terrible. I was really awful. You know, it's probably useful knowing how to cook. I can't remember. I, well, <laughs> I say that now, you know. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. But then I don't even remember applying for the civil service. But I actually um, got into the civil service um, in Bootle, a, a tax office in mm-hmm. Land Revenue. And I started work on the 1st of February 1977, which um, and I'm still there, believe it or not. Um, only part-time, though. I'm partially retired. Um, so next February, the 1st of February, will be 45 years. 45 years, basically in the same job? In the, well, the, the job's completely changed, but in yeah. this, for the same company, if it was a company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pe- people will be coming af- after me with a, a white straight jacket, so you know, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> Well, you can't have disliked it too much if you stuck it out for all this time. Well, you've heard that say, haven't you? I was only there until something better came along, and that was always the way with me. I was always going to do something in the music, you know. Well, you are now. I am, but it's not making money to pay for the, for, you know, for, for things, trees yeah. and stuff. Um, but you know, the, the job pays for a lot of my music things, so it's 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 quite um, it, it's quite nice in that respect. Mm-hmm. That I'm, I'm sort of getting money from where to pay for the, my love, my musical yeah. love. So for quite a long time, you must have been commuting from Mel's to Bootle. 
Well, I started off in Bootle, but um, after 1980, I moved to Liverpool. So uh, from 1980, I, I was in Liverpool Region House, uh, which is just facing James Street Station. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I can visualise it, yeah. Yeah. So when, when exactly did you come over to the Wirral? It's about 10, 11 years ago now. All oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love it. It's fabulous. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's like a dream come true, really, in some respects. Although I do miss Liverpool, obviously, but it, I... You know, it's it's just on a train ride, you know, away. Yeah, it's easy to get to, yeah. Easy to get to, yeah. And I've got a lot of friends and family still. And well, Liverpool Putlians, I mean, they talk about coming to the Wirral as the other side. Yeah. They thought it was the other side of the moon or something. Well, mm. yeah, it's weird because my partner, Len, she says, um, you know, we were called butty chuckers. <laughs> <laughs> All the people from Liverpool. And I said find out what that meant. Apparently we, we go on the ferry and, and we, we take our sandwiches and feed the birds on the whittle. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. But I, you know, it, was, it was new on me. I'd never heard that. No, but yeah, it's, yeah, oh, yeah I don't know where it's come from, but there you go, yeah. Oh, but you don't seem to mind? I don't, no. It's just a, a fun name, isn't it, really? Mm-hmm. No one's going to take offence, are they? I hope. <laughs> so in Wales, do you live next to the sea? It's not far, it's just around the corner. Yes. It's, um, I don't know if you know Mel's that well, but um, we live um, on Park Road, and there's a road called Bennett's Lane, which, which is, I mean, the sea's just, I'd say, probably three minutes walk at the most. That's good. It's lovely. I can't believe it, to be honest. You don't get the worst of the gales, but you can pop out whenever it's a nice day. Yeah, well, yeah it's, um, it's, the weather in Mel's is, I've never known it's rain so much in my life, you know. I, when, I don't know if it's just uh, me or just being aware of what's around me but it seems to be always raining although the last couple of years it's been a bit quite sunny yeah. Well it's rained quite a bit recently hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Did you suffer in the rain of last week when Borough Road down here was flooded? I didn't um, I didn't venture out to be honest I was because yeah. I, I can work from home so it, it, fortunately I can I can stay in the house away from the um, the wild and windy rain Yeah Yeah, yeah. Well, on the assumption that working in a tax office is not the highlight of your existence, am I right in thinking that music is? Yeah, music's always has been, yeah. I mean, I've got so many different hobbies, but yeah. music's always been a, a great love of mine, a great passion. When you say always, um, were you in primary school a musician? I wasn't, no. And do you know what? I've, I'll have to f- try and find my um, my school report because I think I got the lowest mark possible for music. <laughs> <laughs> um, and considering St. Cecilia's is the painter and saint of music, yeah. um, but I used to love hymns. But we used to go to church and, and um, you know, Christmas carols I loved and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, um, I remember I wasn't well once, so they had a um, they had a, a school play in the juniors. Um, so I wasn't chosen for that because I wasn't around. But um, we all got to sing the Ugly Duckling, which is um, a Danny Kay song. I know um, it well, yes. yeah. And um, yeah. I remember getting it, um, and it was one of those records that was like it was. I think it was pink, pink vinyl. <laughs> it was yeah. unusual, like a multicolour vinyl. Yeah. Um, yeah. And playing that, you know, but you know, probably really sort of um, getting on everyone's nerves in the house. So you were a singer rather than any kind of instrument. Then. No, well, uh, what happened was um, I lived when we moved to Barella Road in West Derby. Um, we lived was we, mum and dad. My dad's mum, who was my grandmother what we call Ma, and she had a parlour in the house with a piano in. So my dad used to be playing the piano, and I used to tinkle around with it myself, and then with my two sisters as well. So I taught myself how to play the piano, and then I ended up getting a guitar in mm-hmm. my teens. Um, I can play basic chords on the piano. I'm not, I couldn't play M- Mendelssohn's Spring Song, you know. <laughs> I don't like that, you know. Although I do love classical music. I, um, I, you know, I was really odd in school, I'd say, because I used to go to Woolworths in Tubrook and buy these 50p classical records, right. like Mozart's Piano Concerto Number no. 20 in D minor, um, you know, and Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto Number no. 1 and B flat minor, opus 20, whatever. But even if you can't play it, you can mime to it, can't you? Um, I, I tried to play along with it, but it was, yeah. <laughs> but I wrote my own things, little tunes and stuff like that. Oh, so right. so my music comes from there. And the family used to have a pub on Scotland Ra- Road. In, well, they had a pub, they didn't know it. They, they go to this pub in Dublin Street yeah. called The Bull. Um, my uncles would play guitar and sing, and my mum and dad would go, and we'd go when we were able to go to drink and have a sing-along on a Friday night. So the, the, it's always been a musical family, mm-hmm. and I think it's a bit like Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney has a similar kind of, 
you know, background in some ways. His dad played the piano, I yeah, played the piano. It's not the well, only way you like Paul McCartney. It's, it's the only way I like, I like <laughs> Paul McCartney, yeah. I can't, um, yeah, I can't write like him, unfortunately. Although some people have said I've written a couple of songs that are a bit like Paul McCartney-ish, so. Mm -hmm. And you were writing songs from an early age as well? Yeah, I think I wrote my first song in, um, when I was 16. Yeah. And I wrote hundreds, and they're all terrible. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah, I call them my apprenticeship, apprenticeship songs. Mm -hmm. um, really, until I got into the 80s and I was in a band and I sort of started sort of looking at things a little bit differently, I realised all my songs were melodic, but quite twee. Although, saying that, I, um, I did get signed up, or I did get offered to be signed up by um, a guy called Joe Flannery, who mm -hmm. was in company with um, Clive Epstein, Brian Epstein's brother. Oh, he yeah. wanted to manage me as a songwriter. Um, I worked with a guy called Chris Curtis. He was the drummer with the Searchers. Oh. And he was facing me in work, and I used to come in with my cassettes of songs and say to him, um, Chris, would you listen to this? And I, I, I was a big Beatle fan. I didn't know much about the Searchers until you know, li later on. And I used to ask him all these questions about the Beatles and what it was like in Hamburg and stuff like that. And he was a really patient man, lovely bloke. <laughs> and um, he... he give me some feedback on my songs and stuff. And he put me in touch with Joe Flannery, who was quite interested in, in taking me on as an artist. But I bottled it. I really yeah. bottled it. I, I felt like I couldn't do it, you know. And who time. would you say your songs of the time were like? I mean, were they like Beatles songs? Um, well, I was a big Beatles fan, but a few people said a bit like Gilbert O'Sullivan. Oh, really? Cause, or Billy Joel, because it was just piano, really. Yeah. I did write guitar songs, but a lot of them were um, sort of... Again, I used to wear twee, because lyrically... I was rubbish. <laughs> it did all be um, a lot of sort of lovey-dovey songs, and at that age... Well, people sometimes said Gilbert O'Sullivan was a bit tree, but he wrote very good songs. Oh, he wrote amazing songs. Alone Again Naturally is one, yeah, of, the best one of the best songs. Yeah, one of the best songs in the world. Yeah, it? ever <laughs> written, you know. And that's just about, you know, that's, you know, um, mental health issues, really, I suppose, in some ways. Mm. Um, you know... Yeah, I, I, I've got a couple of Gilbert O'Sullivan albums, um, and there's some really nice songs on them. I've seen them concert as well. Yeah. He's great. So but, um, the Liverpool Philharmonic, not so long Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> quite a few years ago, no, about five, no, but six or seven years ago. Something like that, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I, I suppose if people had to sort of put me in the pigeonhole in those days, it was probably the people that played piano, Elton John, Billy mm -hmm. Joel, Gilbert O'Sullivan. And I, I learned Beatles songs. Like I'd always play Let It Be on the piano. Yeah. So if someone come round, I'd, I'd try and play Lady Madonna, but I always fluffed it after the first <laughs> couple of um, bars. Yeah, it's <laughs> a special rhythm there, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Um, it's you know you've got to be really good piano pianist to, to be able to do stuff like that. I never had any lessons. I wish I had lessons. I, I turned my dad down for lessons. Mm -hmm. He said, "Do you want to do some lessons?" And I said, um, "No, you know." And I, now to this day, I regret it. You know. Well, I don't know. You're more likely to be your own style and more individualistic if you haven't had lessons. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, the, the Paul McCartney says the same thing. He said he didn't have lessons and he didn't want lessons because he didn't want to end up doing things in a, you know, sort of in a way that was expected. He'd, yeah. he'd, he'd yeah. like to do the unexpected. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, at various points during the, this hour's programme, we're going to hear some of your music. Yeah, yeah. And the first one you've chosen, this comes from a CD called Trains. Yeah. And a track called Putting the World to Rights. Do you want to say something about this? Yeah, well, that's the first song that got me back into music. I was in bands in the 80s, and we've done a lot of good things. Um, we got signed up to Sting's management company. Um, oh. Nearly got uh, signed up to a couple of record labels. We, we, at one point it was also or another group, and the other group was Wet, Wet, Wet. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've done radio sessions with John Peel and Janice Long and Kid Jensen and, you know, things like that. But I was out of music for so long, but I still wrote a little bit. What was the uh, name of your group at that point? Um, the first band was Come in Tokyo, mm -hmm. um, and the second band was called The Persuaders, which is, um, I had about 11 people in at one point. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But it was great. It was a great exercise for writing songs because uh, we had a horn section. People used to tell me you can't have a horn section. The Liverpool bands don't have a horn section. They stand with the backs, like, you know, facing the audience and, and they don't look happy. And I said, I'm not having that. I, I, wanna, I, want, us to, I want us to enjoy what we play and I want it to, to, to f the audience to feel that enjoyment and enjoy it themselves. And, and it worked. Two great singers, Siobhan Moore, 
Kennedy, who, who now is in Nashville, and she's worked with all kinds of people. And John Kennedy, great singer. Um, but I was asking music, and anyway, so th- I basically I um, I got a, f- um, a mate of mine told me about the songwriting challenge, where you go to an art gallery and you um, look at a painting and you write a song about it. <laughs> so I went, I saw this painting, and it reminded me of my uncle Harry. And I actually, on the way back to work, because I'd done it in my lunchtime, I'd actually got the idea and the melody of the song, and I sang it down the phone. I finished it off over the weekend because it had to be in by a certain date, and then I completely forgot about it. I honestly completely forgot about it until I got an email saying, you're in the final. <laughs> and I said, um, and not only you're in the final, you've got to perform it and sing it. Now, I was never the singer with the bands I was in. I was just a keyboard player. So when I played it live... I said, to the, as I said to the audience, I haven't played live for about 25 years, and I've, even then I was never the singer. So um, it was, you know, it was really nervous for me. And I came first, joint winner, and I won a song um, at the studio session to record that song. So we recorded it, four hours, with John Lawton in Crosstown Studios, and I thought, wow, that doesn't sound as bad as I thought, you know. Mm. Um, I think I'll try another one. And I'll try another one, and then that's the start of my musical career, you know. So this was the first song we recorded, and um, it's got special, a lot of special um, memories for me. This one. What's what sort of date is this? Then? This is 2015. It's really quite recent, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's give it a listen. Where those 
That's John Jenkins putting the world to rights on voice and on piano. And it's about someone put the world to rights, isn't it? It's about yeah, time. I wish someone would, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. I, I just say, Ned, I've, I've heard, I, I haven't heard that for a long time, five, how, or six, five how, years or so. How does it strike I forgot you know? there was a cello on it. Stephanie Kearney wrote the cello parts, she's lovely. How does it strike you now altogether? Are you, are you proud of it? I am proud of the song. I, if I'd done it now, it'd be in a different key because I can hear. It takes a while when you're singing songs and recording them to work out which is the best key for you. And I yeah. don't think that was the best key. But at the time, it was the only key. You know, um, <laughs> I, I, it was the key I wrote it in. I, I've yeah. learnt, you know, you can write a song in one key, but to actually perform it or to record it, you need to work out whether you need, on a guitar, you need a capo or whether you need yeah. to uh, play it in a different key on a piano. I don't do many piano songs. Yeah. When I play live now, because it's, yeah, it's very, it's, I don't drive, and it's, you know, it's very problematic trying to get your piano on the on the train, you know, yes. <laughs> from gig we're, to gig. Or in the studio, yeah. <laughs> yeah and you, you can put a capo on the piano, yeah, can you? Yeah, so um, I mainly concentrate on guitar songs right now, you know. But there, uh, you were actually playing and singing at the same time, were you? Rather than two separate tracks. Um, I re- I, if memory serves me right, I think I wrote. Um, I think I played the piano track. Yeah, I would have. I definitely would have played the piano track and then done the vocal afterwards. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Although I did play it live, obviously piano and vocal, on the night. When you do it live, you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I have done it live a couple of times. Um, yeah. But uh, not for many years. So when you perform now, you don't perform that. No, no. Uh, do you perform on the piano still? Um, no, I haven't done a piano. I haven't done a concert where, where I've played the piano for a long time, really. I should do because it, it adds a little bit of difference to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I think f- from an audience point of view, they're probably more surprised um, with me playing the piano than the guitar because I fumble a little bit on the guitar. I'm not the best guitar player in the world. I can play chords. I'm not the best piano player, but I can play sort of melodies on, on the piano, which I can't do on the guitar. Hmm. Yeah, so... Give it all my secrets away, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them secret if you want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So a lot of songs I write on the guitar. Although I am writing a song at the moment on the piano. Yeah. Um, it's a new songwriting challenge, so I've got an idea for a song um, called Falling Star. So I was just working on it on the train coming here this morning, getting some, some of the words. Sorted. It's not in the fit state for us to hear now, I think. No, 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 no. I don't even know where it's going at the moment, you know. So have you written quite a lot over the last six years? Since, yeah, since I've you came back into it. Hundreds. Yeah. yeah, I um, and you've recorded a lot of them as well. Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened was um, I got back into music, and then I actually um, I had a health scare. Um, what I'm going into all the details. I um, I basically got, got told I didn't have that long to go, so um, mm-hmm. I it, I I'm okay. You know, I had a tumour, but they took it out, and it wasn't cancerous, but they thought it might have been. Um, but when I was in hospital, I had complications, and um, I was in for, like, over four weeks, and all I kept on thinking was, you know, I, I, I wanted to finish that album off, you know. Yes. <laughs> so when I came out, um, I then went partially retired with work, and I got a lump sum payment, and it, it enabled me to, to, um, to record a couple of albums, because it's uh, quite expensive to record music. Mm-hmm. Um, so a, a lot of me, mo- me money went on recording albums. So I was just writing, writing, thinking, you know, you know, I, if it, anything happened to me, at least I've got a little bit of a legacy, you know, to leave behind. Yeah. Um, which is what I, I kept on thinking about. So, but I, yeah, I just love writing songs, you know. I, I, it, it always surprises me what I can come up with. Um, and I think every songwriter probably would say the same thing, you know. I don't think I'm unique in that. And sometimes you think, oh, did I really write that? Well, it's extraordinary that there are enough notes 
for so very many different songs to be written. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, there's only um, a up to um, G, isn't there? Really, on the um, yeah. on, you know, in terms of chords and stuff like that, you know. And it's only ninety-two notes on the on the piano. Is the or one hundred eighteen? Is it? I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Never go right up to the very top or yeah. right down to the very no. bottom. Anyway, no. 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 And have other people been recording your songs as well? Yeah, I um, when I sort of got back into music, one of the things I did was I, I sort of set up a home studio. Mm-hmm. So I was I'd written a lot of songs in the nineties, which I hadn't played. I, I wasn't playing live, and I, I wasn't in the bands and all like that. So the first thing I did was to test the songs, was to sort of um, record them at home and get people to come in and sing mm-hmm. those songs. Um, and that's, I was great. And then I done another album when I, after the Trains album, which was just other people singing. Because um, at the time, I didn't realise that I was going to be a singer. So, right. um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, let's listen to your second piece of music that you brought along. Yeah. It's called The Wrong Side of Sadness from a collection called If You Can't Forgive, You Can't Love. Yeah, this is my latest album. I got, fortunately, I, um, I got an Arts Council grant. Yeah. Um, which enabled me to record the album and to go on tour. And I got signed to Fretzor Records um, mm-hmm. this year. They uh, a London independent label, lovely people, lovely people involved there. Um, they've got a few really great artists as well. So I approached them and I said, you know, I've got this art grant. You know, and I met the manager and director, Ian, and I said, if, if I record it, do you fancy putting it out? And he said, yeah, you know, we kindly said, yeah. So... Um, yeah, this came out on the sixth of April, sixth uh, of August, only just over a month ago. Oh, gosh. Um, I recorded it um, this year, and um, this song <laughs> it should have been just an acoustic song, but it ended up being something a bit more, as, as you will hear. Um, we sort of the piano. I had a piano player coming on this one, and I he sort of started playing something. And, and when you hear other people doing their bit, you can either say, "Oh, I don't like that," or you know, "Yeah, I love that," but. Um, Lee played this piano bit and I thought oh we'll have to go that way with the, the whole song so it, it, it sends it a different way so you can get an idea of what it's like right let's have a listen yeah. the wrong side of sadness <laughs> I saw the passion in her eyes I've been on the wrong side of sadness for too long Maybe that's why I wrote this song She was the girl from Dylan's North Country At least that's what she told me might say she is right or if she's wrong One more for tale to pass along She said, you say a prayer for me Then she walked out with some guy from Tennessee I don't know why I was never one to take good advice Some things I should have sacrificed But when you're on the wrong side of sadness Get it wrong That's why I sing this song So say a little prayer for me Or leave me alone and let me be And if I only knew what she 
all she ever liked. Great stuff. Yeah. That's really good, The Wrong Side of Sadness. Yeah, as I said, it should have been just an acoustic number, but when Lee came in and played the piano, so it sounded gospel and I said, let's try a gospel version. <laughs> um, and I got Jade Thunder in, to, who, was, who um, is an amazing singer and, and great songwriter as well, doing all these sort of the oohs and ahs. And Robert Vincent, who's just an amazing singer-songwriter, he's won all kinds of awards, deservedly. Uh, he came in and sang on a few songs, including that one, you know. So I was mm. very grateful, very grateful. Is that about a real person, the song? No, no. I um, I always tend to write songs about America for some reason. I, I've got a couple of songs with, like, sort of place names. I fa- I'm fascinated by place names in America, like Bear Lake County, <laughs> um, Tennessee. I've got a song called The Last Train from Baltimore, Um because it, it sounds so much better than the last train from Grimsby, or you know, or it does. Yes, yeah, it's strange. Yeah, <laughs> it's all the you know, or the last train from Morgan, uh, or Croydon. You know, it it sort of for me it sets my imagination going. That one I wrote in New York, um, the lyrics in New York when I was on holiday, um, and it, there's no <laughs> there's no other reason for saying it other than it sounds better. Than I wrote it in Mel's, you know, uh, <laughs> it just sounds. Um, Sounds like it, you, you meant it, you know. You know the story about the yeah. American soldiers who, during the war, were billeted in Leicestershire at a place called Ashby de la Zouche. Oh, yeah. Within about a day, they'd written a song, Ashby de la Zouche by the sea. And it's about <laughs> 100 miles from the sea. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it just seems natural to an American to write a song about where you are, and it yeah. doesn't here. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and you say you like writing about America. On this uh, CD cover, there's a picture of a motel sign, which could hardly be more American, really. Yeah, is, is that the one with Roy's Cafe? Roy's, that's right. Yeah, yes. I, this, yeah. the reason behind that is uh, my partner Lynn's dad was named Roy. So, um, oh, I see. Yeah. So I, I came across that and I thought, oh, you know, just like a nice little touch, you know. Put that's, that's good. Yeah. Now you're, you're getting ready to play yourself in yeah. person. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'll have a go. I mean, I've had problems with my voice the last couple of I should weeks. explain to listeners that you haven't brought in your piano. No, it's a guitar. It's a guitar, mm. yes. Yeah, Um yeah, I couldn't get the piano on the um, on the bus because oh, I had to get some yeah. shopping as well, yeah. um, <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah, I hope my voice is okay on this one because I've had a little bit of a problem. I have a bit of a at the back of my throat, sort of um, trying to clear it all the time. What's the song going to be? It's called The End of Summer, mm-hmm. um, and basically, um, I suppose it's a little bit true, really, about um, sort of looking back on your life and kind of... Knowing that you know, you know, we've all got to go at some point. Yeah. Um, so that's what it's, what it came from, anyway. So you've written this just recently. I wrote it eighteen months ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the new album, but a completely different version again. <laughs> to um, it's because it's got trumpets and uh, strings on the album version, you know. Yeah. But sorry, we couldn't get the trumpet in today. Yeah, I couldn't bring it in. Although it does actually, Tony does. Tony, 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 oh, it's Tony, Tony Pierce. Pierce yeah, yeah. Oh, good heavens! Yes, yeah. he gets around, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, he used to be in our band in the eighties, Tony. I didn't yeah. realise. Yeah, as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's completely off his head. 
<laughs> if they sort of admit that. No. Well, our, our, our listeners like a bit of eccentricity, yeah. I think. So he's a marvellous right. person. Yeah, yeah. Off you go. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to live forever But it would be nice to have some more time Do those things I always wanted to Leave this world with a smile Is it the end? The end of summer Is it the end? Of a beautiful day is brilliant. You like that? Yes, I did. I like the words, I like the tune, I like the voice. You okay. didn't seem to be suffering at all from Larry's there. Well, I haven't picked the song where you sort of got to uh, uh, sing out, you know. Yeah. Well, I was I'm particularly impressed by the way you can play the guitar quietly. There are lots of guitarists around who don't seem to be able to play it quietly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the way I play. I, I don't know. I don't know. The, I'm still learning, to be honest. It's, I'm, I am... Um, I've been getting into Taylor Swift, believe it or not, recently. Have you? Yeah. yeah. She's an amazing songwriter and singer. She's a sort of role model for you now. Uh, yeah. No, what it is, I, I, and I'm fascinated with some of the songs. That, like that one, where I, you know, that's written, that could already be written by someone my age, I think. Well, it is about, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but she's writing songs. Um, well, the, the album that I've been listening to is like when she's in her, in her teens, and it's, it's from a teenage perspective. And the words are great, but I'm just curious to see... Th- what chords she uses so on ebay i bought um a, a guitar chord book yeah. uh, i know you could google it but i just so i could play along with it and the first song is the chords in it i just never even <laughs> thought of playing you know um it's like yeah. a jesus so it, i think it's um something like this i don't know how you how you think how you do the fingers on it but it's <laughs> I can write a song on that, those two chords. But they're chords I've never, ever played on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that put you off. That was very interesting. Yeah. And, and 
the words about being not quite at the end of your life, but at the end of the summer part of your life. It's, it's yeah, exactly well, right. Well, that's the thing. You know, the line on it, um, I, I don't want to live forever. I mean, you know, some people do want to do live forever. But I, I, again, it comes back to when I was, I'd be scared. You know, it was like, um, you know, I don't, you know, I was like, I'm not religious, but I imagine in my head I was sort of thinking, you know, I, I don't, I don't really want to go now. I, I've got so much to do, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want to live forever, but I, there's a few things, that, you know, have a, have a bit more time to do, but, you know. You've got a list of things you've never done and want to do. Yeah, still, still, yeah. I think I've basically done all the things I want to do, but there are lots I'd like to do again. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I'm at that point now where when we go on holiday or, you know, places, I think, this is probably the last time I'm going to go here. Mm. Or books, when I'm reading books, it's the same thing. You know, I'll probably never read that book again. Or films, I'll probably never see that film or that TV series again. Mm. So. And when you are choosing where to go on holiday, you're torn between going back to places you know and like or going to somewhere new you haven't been before. Well, I, I love seaside resorts <laughs> in this country. Yes. And um, my partner, Len, she's completely, um, you know, she, I think she want to throttle me every time I come up with, like, can we go to Minehead? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, because I'd, I'd like to go to some of these places um, as an adult. Yes. I went to Tenby with a mate, um, you know, in the, in the noughties, and I hadn't been t- a long, long time, and I was with him. Sadly, he's no longer with us now. Um, and I was saying to him, George, I don't remember any of these pubs. And he said, well, it might be because you're only 12, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, it just didn't dawn on me that I hadn't, I hadn't been of a drinking age or something like that, you know. But um, yeah, I'd like to see some of these places again as an adult, you know. Well, you more or less live in a seaside resort at the moment. I mean, the north shore of the Wirral is much more of a yeah. sand beach than it used to be. Yeah, but I like pears and stuff. We went to Blackpool to see the... Um, the country music, British Country Music Award, um, British Country Music Festival, th- 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 two weekends ago I think it was, or ten days ago, and um, I didn't realise I've been to Blackpool. I've been for since I was a kid again. Yeah. Two peers, I didn't realise they had two peers. Um, it was great. I loved it, but no one else seemed to enjoy it as much. They all, thought, all the shots were full of tat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love all that, you know. Yeah, you're not forced to buy it. Yeah. No. Uh, your next piece of music, I believe this is a single, Who Took the Stars Out of the Sky. Yeah. I've got a friend, Eileen Bridges. Well, I've got a lot of friends, actually, but um, <laughs> she's got a wonderful voice. And when we we go to um, open mics, and she got me up to sing um, I've Got You, Babe, you know, the Sonny and Cher song. With you? With me. Yeah. On the night, I didn't, I wasn't prepared. Not only did I have to sing, I had to play it as well. The funny thing about it was I was singing the share part and she was singing the sunny part. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I loved the voice and I, I thought she sounded a bit like Cher, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll write her a song. So um, I wrote the song for it and we went in the studio and recorded it and sort of... The the aim was, it, the um, with, with the producer John Lawton, was to create a, like a 1960s Phil Spector kind of vibe on it. And I, 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 I think it works really well, actually, yeah. So I'm quite proud of it, really. Are you on this yourself? Um, did I play on it? I don't think I am, no. No. You're not on the list at the back, except as the writer and producer. Yeah. yeah. Co-producer, yeah. And it's credited to Sister Lee. Yeah, that's a uh, musical that's name. Stage name. Sister Lee, yeah. Good. And the song is called Who Took the Stars Out of the Sky? Let's find out who. Who took the stars out of the sky? Who broke my heart and said goodbye I'll never love again Now you walk here with my friend And get no reason why Who took the soul from a good home Oh, oh, oh. 
song written by and produced by and today chosen by our guest in the studio john jenkins who has been giving us a wonderful tour of your multiple talents (laughs) (laughs) my only talents (laughs) what's the answer who took the stars out of the sky i don't know i I, again it's one of these songs where i I actually wrote on the way to um i I always write stuff in the middle of the road (laughs) um (laughs) i was walking to the train station and um I sing in my head, you know, and, and if something comes up that I think is quite, you know, I like, I, I'll sing it and be, end up singing it on my phone. And um, I don't know where the title came from, but I thought it was a really nice title, you know. Oh, so you record yourself on the phone as you're walking around and then yeah. work on it later. And then, yeah, I'll go home and sort of yeah, work on it, you know, properly. Well, the equivalent of Wordsworth. Sorry? Uh, Wordsworth did the same. With, oh, did he? he? Except he didn't have a phone. No, he didn't. No, no. No, no. no we had a... Uh, Emotions a recollected and tranquility. Yes. yes. Yes, sorry. Um, as well as all this, writing, producing, performing, singing, you've been doing a musical. I wrote a musical, yeah. That's I wrote the... Um, I, I mean, that... I've ne- it's never been performed. I don't know. I don't even know how you would get a musical performed. You go to the Royal Court and say, how could this <coughs> musical please perform? Well, I, I, I sent a few things off to a few people and I didn't get replies and I thought, well, you know what? And the thing is, I, I I didn't do it. I started writing one um, in the noughties, sort of, and then I just left it. And then I sort of got into a a, a, a mode where, I, in dinner time, I, I thought I'll I'll finish that musical off, you know. So I wrote the script, the play aspect as well as the songs. Mm-hmm. And then when I um, got me lump sum payments, I thought I'd just do some demos. So I got a few people in to perform. On 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 the uh, the songs, I noticed from the the CD that one of the people you've been working with was Nicola Hardman. Yeah, she was my guest here, and um, the last one before lockdowns. Oh right, yeah, she's yeah, wonderful. She's, she's brilliant, isn't she? Yeah, she's just got married. Oh yeah, yeah, well, in the last week, yeah. It's oh, okay. Yeah, to Lewis, yeah, <laughs> she's a lovely girl, yeah, lovely couple. Yeah, and her her CD is um, pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mean to say that. No, it's all right. Yeah. The song that you're going to play from then, New York, A New York Romance is the name of the musical. Yeah. And the song is Suddenly Came Too Soon. And is this, um, I mean, it's New York, is it sort of American style? I, I'd like to think some of it is, yeah. I, 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 I'd like to, um, I mean, the, the guys that sang on, on the demos, which, I mean, these are only demos, um, they did sing in a kind of American accents. Uh, the girls that sang on it, um, Young girls, they, uh, Sarah and Megan Louise, they just sang like the normal voice. Sarah had a bit of a a, 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 a frozy voice herself on the day, so that you can hear that a little bit. But I think it adds to it, really. You know, well, uh, demos tend to sound a bit like a recording of a musical on stage, as it were. Yeah, you haven't got the studio velvet. Well, in the background. that was the idea of it. I, I didn't want to produce it like the last song. Um, I wanted it to be just basically how it would be on stage. That's good. So it was just like bass, drums, guitar, piano, singers. Right, let's go. I believed this love affair always would last with. 
would never be part of my past. I believe in everything. There's a truth, and now I wake up to reality. How can I go on? Knowing he doesn't care for me, I thought he was mine. I thought he was meant to be. Suddenly. Suddenly came too soon from John Jenkins's musical, The New York Romance, yeah. recently written, performed by Kate and Charlie. Yeah, they're the characters in the um, 
other characters in the play. Yes. But it's it's Sarah Jones and um, I think it's P- um, Peter King. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do yes, you have more plans for the future? As, as a I have. Yeah. Yeah. My immediate plans is to pick a couple of onions up from Birkenhead Market. <laughs> well, aim high. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, musical. Um, I'm playing on the 9th of October at mm-hmm. the Prohibition in Liverpool. Um, I'm doing a, um, a show with Alison Benson, who um, we've been writing songs together. We just released a single. It's on the new album, Strangers on a Train. And then I'm playing with band Thornton Hoof Village Club on the 3rd of December. They had the two definite plans. I've applied for one of the oh, council grants, so I hopefully I can start another album, do more touring. Uh, down the line. So it isn't um, quite the end of summer, is it? You've got, or at least an Indian summer coming along. Well, I, 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 if I do a tour, it'll be the wi- a winter tour. And this is all by yourself, is it, or with other m- fellow musicians? Um, this, the last tour was with um, a girl called uh, Pippa Mary, who plays mandolin, back and singing and guitar. So it's just the two of us. I'd like to do something maybe with the band, if, if it was possible, but it, again, it just depends on, on the finance, really, you know. Mm. Um, a lot of the, um, yeah, it, it c- can be quite expensive p- putting people up in hotels and tra- transport. You'd have to just weigh up how much you're getting paid at the gigs and whether you are getting paid or not, you know. Um, and um, does your wife enjoy the music as well? She's very supportive, yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, she does. She, I mean, yeah, she doesn't tell her friends about it, unfortunately, which is, you know which you'd like, but um, she does support in, in a lot of ways, yeah. And she put up, puts up with me sort of being on the computer doing all the um, all the stuff that you've got to do these days, social media stuff, to promote yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, you do a lot of work promoting yourself. I mean, you, you send around the, these large posters to yeah. your friends on the internet. Yeah, it's... it's, um, it's it's part of the job, unfortunately. I wish I had someone who, who would do it for me, so I can just get on with songwriting. Yeah. Um, it's like when I was in the band in, in, in the in the eighties. Uh, I used to do all the running around myself, and you know that time really should be for your songwriting or rehearsing. Yeah. So I'm looking for a manager. Anyone out there who can manage me? Uh, well, if you have an agent or a manager, you've got. To yeah, I need an agent. You're definitely. Stuck into a different world, then. Yeah, I need to, to open doors. You need people in the right places to get on festivals or bigger gigs or be- better support mm. slots um, and manage doing publicity or, or, or someone working on your publicity but the Social most media. important thing is to be happy with your own work yeah isn't it? it is yeah and that, that might even be enough yeah it is at the end of the day if you can't please yourself you're not, you're not going to be able to please anyone else you know mm. at the end of the day well, John, it seems it's gone very quickly, but we've finished, it has, our, finished yeah. our hour. So. Yeah, well, thank you, Roger, for having me in and talking about Thank you very music. much indeed yeah. for yeah, it's been coming very in. enjoyable. It has flown. It's been great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just to remind listeners, I've my radio programmes on tomorrow night. Yes. I'll time. be finishing it later this afternoon. Okay, this is at <laughs> 9 o'clock on a Friday evening, the, the yeah. garden party, yeah. uh, which is, of course, great fun. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>